I mean, for one, our findings suggest that people respond strongly to these incentives and that um, combining a carbon tax with a dividend is a good idea. This could be practically implemented by creating some kind of a reward system for individuals or households who demonstrate certain pro-environmental behaviors. Welcome to another episode of the Kaiserschild podcast on research results from projects initiated by the Kaiserschild Foundation today in English. I would like to welcome Sarah Flecke from the Department of Banking and Finance at the University of Innsbruck. Together with her colleagues Sebastian Bachler and René Schweiger, she has tested the effects of carbon pricing alone and in combination with different carbon dividends on the behavior of test subjects. Welcome, Ms. Flecke. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. You and your colleagues address the problem that although it is generally accepted that climate change will have a negative impact on us and future generations, if it is not curbed, there is little incentive for individuals to change their behavior. You have described this as a prisoner's dilemma mentality. What do you mean by that? So the problem with large-scale issues is that um, well, especially those that require collective action, is that an individual who changes his or her behavior cannot alone solve the problem. So it takes a critical mass of individuals to change behavior to make a meaningful difference. And this awareness is an obstacle in the way of meaningful change. So to liken this to a prisoner's dilemma, collectively, individuals and countries are much better off cooperating by changing consumption and production patterns. Um, and by doing so, we can prevent something like catastrophic climate change, which is, of course, good for all of us. But as an individual, I cannot guarantee that others will also cooperate. And such environmental action might be costly or effortful. So I'm inclined not to behave environmentally myself. And then others likely consider the same And collectively, this leads to inaction. So overall, that's actually the worst outcome for me personally and for everyone collectively. So the dilemma is that individually, there's an incentive to continue behaving in a way that is bad for the environment. But this is the worst outcome collectively. So collectively, we ought to be cooperating, but we have an individual incentive not to. Your study examines the impact of different types of carbon pricing Could you briefly explain what a carbon tax and a carbon dividend is? Yes, so a carbon tax is a tax levied on the carbon emissions that are required to produce goods and services. So, for example, the petrol that I put in my car um, would be taxed um, with a carbon tax. So this makes consumption of such goods more costly, which can lead people to reduce their consumption in favor of greener, and therefore cheaper alternatives. So for example, um, with a carbon tax that makes the fuel more expensive, I might be incentivized to drive less in favor of taking public transportation. And a carbon dividend is a way of uh, redistributing the levied carbon tax. So the tax revenue from the carbon tax gets paid out directly to the taxpayers. You have decided to use an experimental design for your study and exposed your test subjects to different stimuli to test their reaction. What did it look like? In the study, we developed uh, what's called a threshold public, good, public goods game. Um, essentially, the participants of our study had to play a game in groups, which gave us insights into their behavior. Um, we con conducted this study online with a large sample of the U.S. adult population. So we had over 2,000 participants. And then participants were randomly assigned to form groups of four. And these groups, so these four players, um, played together in real time over the course of 10 rounds. And in each round, every participant had to make an individual consumption decision. Um, so they had to decide how much of a fictitious good or service to consume. And this good, and service, good or service uh, gave them a monetary benefit, but also produced a negative externality. So a contribution to a simulated CO2 emission. Um, 
In practice, this meant that in every round, each participant had to decide whether to consume either nothing at all, a moderate amount, or a maximum amount, which we set. And for every unit of consumption, they gained one token, which was an experimental currency, which they could exchange for a bonus payment at the end of the game. But a unit of consumption also contributed a unit of CO2 emission. So there were two things going on. First, consumption, which led to an accumulation of tokens, and then also which led to an accumulation of CO2 emission. And the catch, the catch was that there was a critical threshold of CO2 emissions. So if that threshold was reached, then a catastrophic climate change occurred in the game. So if at the end of the 10 rounds, a group reached the critical threshold of CO2 emissions, then all of their accumulated tokens were at risk. If they remained below the critical threshold, then they could trade in their tokens for a bonus cash payment. So the participants had an individual incentive to consume more, but also an incentive to collectively uh, remain below the emissions threshold, so not consume too much. And then throughout the game, participants could see how close they were getting as a group to the critical threshold and how many tokens they had accumulated in their personal accounts. They could also see the previous round consumption of every member of the group but they made all of their consumption decisions for the current round at the same time. So they couldn't see, uh, they couldn't decide based on what other people were doing in the present round, how much to consume because the decisions were simultaneous, but they could update from the past round behavior. Um, And so we then investigated the percentage of groups who remained below the critical threshold. So those who avoided catastrophic climate change, and we varied the setup in order to examine the effects of different carbon pricing mechanisms on behavior. So in addition to the randomization of the the groups, participants were also randomly assigned to one of four different treatment conditions. So the, the setup that I just described was our baseline condition, which served as a control. And so in this case, if, uh, if I decided on a consumption of two units, I would receive two tokens um, in my personal account and I would contribute two units of CO2 emission. And then we had a second treatment, which um, was a carbon tax condition. And here we applied a tax on each unit of consumption, which essentially made it less attractive to consume. So for example, if I select the same two units of consumption, then I actually only receive one token into my account because one token gets contributed as a tax. So there's a 50% tax rate applied on consumption. However, I still contribute two units of CO2 emissions. And then we had two further conditions which examined um, the role of a carbon dividend. So um, the first of the two dividend conditions is Um, we call the symmetric dividend condition. So here is the same setup as with the tax. So there's a a tax applied on each uh, unit of consumption, but the difference is that in this treatment, the tax actually gets redistributed each round in equal shares to the group members. And what that does is it essentially makes consuming nothing, um, or it can mean that consuming nothing can still yield a dividend payout. So in the case where um, I select a consumption of two, I receive one token to my account, one token gets contributed as tax, I contribute two units of CO2 emissions, and then all of the taxes contributed from all of the players get added up and then divided by four, because they're four members of the group, and paid out to everybody in equal share. And then finally, we also introduced a asymmetric dividend condition. And this is the same as as the the previous, the symmetric dividend condition, um, except that the tax revenue um, gets redistributed only to the below average consumers. So this is um, akin to the polluters pay pay principle. 
Um, so the idea being that if I consume uh, more than the group average, I don't receive the um, dividend payout. But if I remain below the group average, then I receive the, the dividend payout divided only by the below average consumers. And then we looked at how consumption levels and the success rates, so remaining below this critical threshold, differed between the different conditions. I shortly tried to wrap it up for me. The three groups apart from the control group were labeled tax, symmetric and asymmetric. Please interrupt me if I'm wrong. And in the tax group, only a tax was collected without paying a dividend. In the symmetric group, a dividend was paid regardless of the consumption behavior of the test subjects. And in the asymmetric group, the test subjects with lower carbon emissions received a higher dividend, so they were rewarded for their behavior. Is that right? That's correct, yes. And which of these models worked best? So we found that participants in the asymmetric dividend condition had a significantly higher success rate than all the other conditions. So 94% of groups in the asymmetric dividend condition remained below the critical threshold. Um, we also found that participants in both the symmetric and the asymmetric dividend conditions, so in our two dividend conditions, consumed significantly less than the baseline and the tax conditions. You also looked at the attitudes of the test subjects towards carbon pricing and unsurprisingly, people who were concerned about environmental protection were also more positive about carbon pricing than others. But you also noticed changes during the experiment. How did this experience affect the test subjects? So we found that experiencing the measures, so experiencing the, the tax with the dividend, positively affected people's perceptions of these measures. So after this um, game, we asked participants a series of questions about carbon taxes and carbon dividends. For example, whether they believe a carbon tax and dividend would help reduce carbon emissions, whether they felt that this was a fair method of reducing emissions, whether they would support such a policy. And we found that individuals in the asymmetric dividend condition expressed more favorable attitudes about carbon taxation and carbon dividends than the baseline condition. And since assignment to these different um, treatment conditions was random, there is no reason that the attitudes should differ. So um, we can conclude that the treatment itself affected people's um, as opinions of them. What does this positive experience with the asymmetric model of carbon tax and carbon dividend mean for the future design of tax systems? How could an asymmetric model be implemented that assesses the behavior of individuals? Well, of course, implementation in real life is not as straightforward as it is in such a stylized and controlled setting like our study. But there are still some important things that we can take from it. Um, I mean, for one, our findings suggest that people respond strongly to these incentives and that um, combining a carbon tax with a dividend is a good idea. Specific to the, to the asymmetric dividend, um, this could be practically implemented by creating some kind of a reward system for individuals or households who demonstrate certain pro-environmental behaviors. So, for example, payments could be issued to those that have Uh, below average energy usage for the size of their household or home type. Um, payments could be issued to those who don't have a car or who have uh, more efficient vehicles or electric vehicles um, or to those who make energy efficient improvements to their home. And such information could be collected when filing a tax return, for example, or there could be a separate submission system for such claims. And payments can then um, or could then be made to taxpayers directly as cash transfers, which is something that we see um, among the, the countries that have introduced a form of, of um, carbon dividend. Are there examples for the realization of an asymmetric tax system already? Well, so I guess the answer is sort of. Um, there are some countries that have introduced a, a carbon dividend. 
in, in terms of an asymmetric redistribution, Canada is the closest example that I am aware of. Um, they issue the dividend payments, which they call climate action incentive, to everyone, but individuals who can demonstrate certain energy efficient upgrades to their home, for example, uh, can claim back a larger amount. And that's a bit different from Austria's version, um, the Klima bonus, where currently there is a fixed sum that's paid out per adult once per year. So Canada does have some asymmetric elements, which I would expect to be a more effective mechanism based on the research that we have conducted. Ms. Flecke, thank you very much for this interesting insights into your research. When are the results expected to be published? So we have submitted um, this paper for publication in a special issue um, of the Journal of Economic Behavior and Organization. It's currently under review. Um, we have been asked to make some edits by March. So we're in a second round of revisions and um, hopefully we can expect uh, a positive report from, from the editors um, at some point in the spring um, and at the beginning of the, of the year. We are looking forward to that. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I would just like to thank you and the Kaiserliche Stiftung for your time and for your support of this research. Um, and of course, to my colleagues at the University of Innsbruck. And thanks very much for having me today. 